Oh, okay. There he is. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, that's now an uh, interesting situation. You can't actually see my vice. Now, there we go. Here, there we yeah, are. People, yeah. Sort of yeah. seeing my face and vice. This might not work. I'll just sit very far forwards. <laughs> How you doing, man? You know, I'm doing well, at least. Um, yeah. Don't be can, can you see my vice? I just want to make sure. I can see, I can just see the top of it. So oh, we're okay. good. Okay. Your your coronavirus facial hair is much more impressive than mine. <laughs> I've got this sort of spindly, weird beard thing. You've got a full... I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I, I just let it I just let it grow out and just bang out during this whole thing. I'm, like, <laughs> dude, I'm, not, I'm not like seeing people, or if I am, it's like on video, and they can't really tell. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> here I am, dude. That's my, that's my thought process. Did you get a beer in the end? <laughs> yeah, dude, I did. I actually did. Nice. I nice. mean, it's 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. Why not? Why, why not? not? I mean, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Mm-hmm. So, we've actually got some people watching us, which is quite exciting. I was, I was expecting it was just going to be the two of us, but it's going to be quite... He didn't think anyone was coming. Nah, <laughs> not. Um, that is always the struggle, knowing, like, okay, who, like, really cares to watch? <laughs> like, I know, exactly, exactly. My, yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so this is Beer and Bear, yeah, which is. is basically just going to be me chatting with interesting people like yourself daniel heck yeah dude i'm All stoked right. i think it's an awesome idea <laughs> you're always well, coming with good ideas oh man, man you're so flattering <laughs> um so the sort of structure of it basically is going to be if you were in the uk there's a show in the uk called desert island discs oh no which has been on which is a radio show which has been <laughs> on for like ever. It's one of the longest running radio shows in British okay. history. And I was kind of thinking about doing a fly fishing version. So the concept of the show is you're stuck on a desert island okay. and you can only take a certain amount of songs with you. I think you've, you're given uh, the complete work of Shakespeare and a Bible and then you're allowed one luxury item and the complete and a number of different songs. Oscar, what happens if you can't read or write? Uh, uh, let's, we're not getting that philosophical here, Daniel. I think, you know, let's, let's just go with, go with what we've got. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's, we're not, what, what we're doing is not exactly like that, but yeah. we're going to tie, so you're going to tie three flies. Yeah. And three flies that, you know, aren't necessarily like your number one fish catching flies, but they are yeah, that's flies a good that <laughs> well, it's, but they're flies that have kind of a meaning to you. So, yeah. I mean, I'll let you talk about it, but you know, when we were talking yeah. before, I was sort of saying it could be the fly that you caught your first fish on, or you know, that's a fly that evokes a particular memory or something like that. Sure. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to start with, and you'll talk through and i'm thinking i'm going to try and tie at the same time i've got a okay. random box of materials here so i'm going to try and follow you and ask okay. you some questions whilst you're doing it and yeah we'll go from there well forward i am quite possibly the slowest tire ideal I mean, beer, ideal beer, beer, we've got beer time kinda, beer kind of like gets me going a little bit you know quicker but it gets a lot sloppier as it goes. So. Well, yeah. I mean, the 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 trick is time fast and good. That's that takes practice. Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah. So I think the first fly I was gonna tie um, mm -hmm. is actually the Guide's Choice Hairs Ear. Um, it's pretty. It's it's a relatively common fly. Like I, I think, particularly in the states. I don't know if it's made it over to you guys, but essentially, what it is is your hair's ear and then just kind of buffed up a little bit with like a few more of those tasty like little snacks that trout like so um cool yeah so, so i mean yeah go ahead what hook are we tying it on we're i'm gonna use a size 12 jig hook so okay from umqua um i love their stuff i love their competition stuff and honestly part of the reason why i love it um just in the description it says um 60 degree jig heavy wire wide gap um and what I like about it is 
with check nipping, man, like weight is everything for one and two, um, strength is everything, right? Because, yeah. and a large part, uh, you know, we're fishing three weight, uh, 11 foot rods. And so do you have like a fly that has extra strength, uh, you know, that extra wide and, um, mm-hmm. heavy wire is like key. And so a lot of times when I'm fishing, you know, and I'm tagging a big fish and I know, okay, well, both my tippet and my rods, tippet protection and my fly are like solid, then I feel a lot more confident. Um, nice. Yeah. Well, I hope that's I've got. I'll, I get these yeah, ones. What do you got? These. I'm going to tie it on a size 14 because that's what I've got. These okay. are some okay. very cheap hooks that I buy from China, which oh. are heavily mediocre, but they're <laughs> totally fine because I don't catch very big fish. So. Oh my goodness! It's, it's not a problem. Not a Dude, problem at all. What, what is up with that? Why is it? Why do you think? Like, what's your theory on the size of fish in, like, you know, your England area, in comparison to other areas? Like, I've just, I maybe it's a lack of seeing fish from England, but I just noticed like there's like a kind of a sweet spot range from like I don't know, like twelve to like sixteen in the UK. Is that pretty true? Or not the UK, but England? Twelve to sixteen inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. sorry. okay. <laughs> I have to like. I need to get a tape measure. Hang on. <laughs> I don't. Know. I actually don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, so well, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Um, well, I mean, it depends where you go. If you go to one of the chalk streams, which are full of stock trout, and you know, you go and do a bit of stocky bashing, there, those fish are like. There's loads stocky of fish bashing. up to. 15, you said stocky bashing. Is that what? You yeah. Said? That's stocky awesome. bashing. I love that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what we call it, go and catch stockfish. So like, cause, so most of our, most of, well, not most of our rivers, a lot of them are stocked, but they're not stocked with big fish. You know, the rivers around here where I am, a lot of them have just, you know, in the last few years stopped stocking. But yeah, okay. there are, you know, Duncan's just said on there, there's, there are some massive fish in the UK. Like, and yeah. the rivers are, you know, particularly up in Scotland, Oh yeah. oh yeah. Liam might be on here chatting. I mean, he catches huge trout, particularly at this time of year. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, oh, so yeah. they they are there. And, totally. But the I don't really know. <laughs> I don't. I've never. So so for me, size has never been a thing that I've worried about. <laughs> um, no, but it's, also, it's never. I just enjoy catching fish and I enjoy the process of catching fish. And sure. I've never really thought about well, dropping tons and beats. Never really thought about catching massive fish. Sure. But, you know, I have caught some yeah. semi decent fish. Um, but like on the chalk streams, you know, you can go to certain places and you can know that you're going to catch fish over, well, definitely over five pounds. But Nice. There are fish in those rivers, which, yeah, you know, silly sizes. Wow. Well, um, I've definitely seen, I mean, Scotland in particular, I mean, they have some massive just fish, especially from Sea Run, you know, like that. I mean, that's that's a trick. Do you hear that? That's my dog. Yeah. Man. How is she's your dog, man? She's just one. She's okay. She's okay. Here, let me see if I can get it. Just come on. Want to say hi? Let's say hi to the people. Come on. Oh, no. My two dogs <laughs> might jump on me in a minute. That'd be a nightmare. There she is. Right there. See, she's oh, easy. I can hear I can hear dogs stirring. Hello. What's she called? Her name's Jesse. Jesse. Hey Jesse. Yeah. My uh my grandfather was a firefighter and uh oh, cool. Yeah, he actually so when San Francisco had this big old fire, um this yeah. big chemical fire, um a large, large the the far majority of the firefighters who fought in that chemical fire actually um, died from various like just chemical diseases and so he his firehouse was on jesse street and so i was like hey, that's oh. a great name and nice. uh, yeah so grandpa didn't get a dog or get a kid grandpa got a, a dog so cool you know? cool but, yeah Fair. um Fair. So i'm i am i've just signed up to be a volunteer firefighter very oh, exciting awesome. very that's exciting awesome. do you have emt like background or anything like that no no, it's it's basically it was explained to me that it was like scouts for adults, <laughs> and it sounded brilliant. And yeah. you get paid, 
So <laughs> you get paid for a volunteer position. Yeah. That's if you nice. get if you actually get called out. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, well, let me catch everyone up. So right, yeah. What um, are you doing? So size 12 hook. Um, I've got uh four millimeter coffee tungsten beads. Um coffee. Yeah, they're called oh, coffee. Interesting. I don't, I, I don't know if I can get you good as a good look, but that's kind of I I got it. It's it's brown. Yeah, it is. Let's, let's say brown. Very metallic brown too. And okay. I, I haven't I haven't really got into um what's it called? The mat. I haven't I haven't really fished a lot of mat stuff. Um but then after that, just your typical cocktail leon. Um I'll grab my non expensive <laughs> white and black barbed feather. Barbed hey, feather. You know what, man? I I now spoil myself, you know? Like I, I go yeah. big on it now because I'm like I tie the same stuff, and so I'm gonna be using it all. And I don't know. Anyways, yeah. So no, I been, used to use a lot of cockle on, but I just I ran out, and then I was like, "Hang on, I've got all these other feathers that I don't oh, use, yeah. and they basically do the same thing." Okay, so, you nice. Dude, so we live on a property. So um, I don't know how many people know, but I'm a youth pastor. That's like what I do for work. Um, but we live on the church's property, and so we have tons of hawks and turkeys and all kinds of things so when i run out of pheasant tail this is the bank i go to and um, i'll tie with turkey feathers i'll tie with hawk feathers we're surrounded i just picked up so many they're all over there at the moment but i just picked up i actually just picked up the nicest pheasant tail really long five it's beautiful nice that's awesome um yeah. okay so, right, so yeah. what are we doing yes yeah, so i tied on just really simple i mean i've tied the cocktail on. I, I don't I don't I don't particularly like lose my mind on, you know, like three exact um three exact little pieces. I, I think I don't know. There's eight, nine on there. And it, it's kind of like this this fly I really want to be like a thin profile and then like really buggy. So it doesn't I'm I'm not tripping about it being like, you know, some very specific perfect number. Like it's it's just not necessary. Um so a couple I mean, things. It yeah, go. It never is. I've never found no, it to no. actually be necessary. No, not at all. Not at all. I, I think it's I think at times it's kind of blown out of proportion when people are like, exactly three, don't get yeah. any more than this. <laughs> if you do, you'll never catch a fish. So Yeah, I mean it must be so daunting coming to sport, like reading in books like, gotta use this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. Jesus, nightmare. And that's the funny thing, like, um, I, it's funny, like, I would say one of the things I protect most is the flies that I use. And the crazy thing about that is, even in that theory, like, dude, I, I, I think the technique is far, far and above the fly you use. So it's kind of funny. Um, I mean, I have certain flies um, that I tied that, like, were literally just from observing, like, bug life. But... Mm -hmm. And and those ones I've like put together and and dude everyone's done it all like it, there's nothing that anyone's doing that <laughs> brand new you know um, <laughs> so so it's like uh, I I have a few and that's the funny thing is those are like the that's maybe the only thing I'm like I gotta hold that tightly that and spots you know like in fly yeah. fishing I, I I don't like to share my every single bug but this is one that's really effective and I like a lot so cool yeah. all um, right what have you done now. Okay, so I've got gold wire. Um, it's the ultra wire. Um, Copper. Yeah, that'll work, dude. It'll all work. Um, yeah, and this is, I mean, not only weight, but the the guide's choice hairs here. It's Rafton gold wire and or flash. So it's kind of like an a, a different option. But I know that what's coming up very soon here is um sp like spring runoff, and so I'm like, I need to. I need to add weight to the bugs that I'm going to be fishing. And so yeah. I'm going with the wire for this one. I also have like a, I have like a, I don't even know what you call this, uh, but it's, it's, it's not wire, but it's gold colored. Um, it's not even like a tinsel. I almost, it's, it's. Oh, a, is it like a braid type thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually like a flat favorite. braid. I think they call it flat braid. something like that. Yeah. That's exactly. It says uni French on it, but um, yeah. So yeah. wires on CDC is on, um, or right. CDL is on um yeah wait then, cdc did i say it right i sometimes i mess it up do you mean cop to Leo, cdc or cop to Leo? cdl cdl sorry cdl right yeah got yeah. it i was like i was i was cdc going <laughs> <laughs> well that's actually with the guy's choice a lot of people will tie 
um, they'll tie partridge up at the top or even CDC. It's like the, the cool thing about the, the guide's choice hair zero is they're like, let's make a hair zero, which everyone has fished and it's successful and it works well. And then let's just add everything on it. Like, let's put gold yeah. wire on it. Let's put like, let's put, you know, a little red up at the top. Like, let's do CD. Like, it, they just, they're, they're like, this is the fly that has everything that you could ever want on it. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, then I'm just going to do very natural uh, dubbing. It's like a natural color. Um, cool. I've got some of that. But what I would say is one thing I look for when I get dubbing is I'm, I, I really don't, I don't like dubbing that's all like, how do you describe it? Like, I like it when it has a good mix of spiky. Like, you know what I mean? Like, has a good mix of um, yeah. like hard, long pieces in it. Because if not, you just get like a little blob. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get you. I use this stuff. It's Argentinian hair. Oh, like, it's nearly run out. It's very nice. Very spiky. Yeah. So, oh, that's a nice noise. <laughs> Can you hear okay, that? After, don't let me let, don't let me talk myself into a circle here. Okay, so if you got questions you want to ask, let's ask them. <laughs> yes. <Thank you. laughs> so, why is this fly? Why is this fly important to you? Yeah. Okay. So when I first started fly fishing, um, like very seriously. So I, I played collegiate baseball. Um, I was kind of on track to go play at a um, D1 school. I had my scholarships come in order or my scholarship in order. I was going to go play out in Ohio um, and I stopped playing um, and we can talk about why a different time, but basically it was to pursue ministry, um, which is, I'm so grateful I made that decision. Um, but I lost my mind not being outside 60 hours a week. And so that's when I started fly fishing. Um, okay, cool. Like a lot, right? Yeah. And my buddy, Phil, who I'm sure people have seen um, because I fish with him a lot. Um, yes. He and I just started doing all this research and we never hired guides. Like we were just two people who loved it and pushed each other to get really good at what we were doing. Um, and this was one of the first flies that we like we both had vices and we both started tying it um yeah and so i love this fly i think early on it was the first fly that i found that i was just like oh my gosh like this is a game-changing fly you can fish it in still water you can fish it in fast water you can fish it under an indo you can fish it any time of the year because it's just like a good attractor pattern also did you see that i cut my wire with my scissors you like, absolute heathen <laughs> But um, yeah, and so I, I love this fly because it's just super versatile and it, it was one of the first ones. I mean, yeah, you can see, so it, I don't know how well they can see. Can you, can you see it, Oscar? Can you see the fly right now? Sort of, yeah. Can you so, see mine? Yeah, just enough. I can tell it's like a, it, it looks like a streamer, probably. Yeah, that right. <laughs> um, but I mean, as is right now with just natural hairs here, um, tightly wrapped wire um, and the CD, the cocktailion off the back, like you could fish this fly as is. And yeah, it's, cool. it's, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really impressive. Like that a fly can be that good, you know, like, or, or just, you're just adding on. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love this fly. It's a really good one. Cool. Yeah. So what's next? So ribs. So, ribs dubbing's on um so now this is probably the part, part where i play around with the most is how am i going to create the the um what do they call it the collar i so I'll, yeah. I'll get creative here um because i just got this from blue coil angler i'm going to try this out it's peacock fine dubbing cool um, it's like green got some sparkles some uv sparkle um yeah beautiful um this is lighter than i wanted but i think it'll work just fine but basically my concept when i think about a collar like in a lot of ways like i want it to like stick out and have much more legs than the rest of the fly um i think other people are like that too but it's really important to me because when you really look at a nymph like when you really look at it underwater you'll notice like it's pretty much all of the extra legs are up at the front right and so yeah. I want to do my very best to like mimic that without blowing up the fly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to keep it really thin. Just wrap it. And again, not crazy with it, but also like 
I want it to have a good bounce to it. Like, yeah. yeah. So super, super simple fly. If I want to really play around with the whole guide choice thing, I'm going to tie on some, like a hot spot at the top. But to be honest, um, I'm going to leave this one as is because nice. I, really like, I really like to keep it simple. I lost my belt, Craig. This is my, um, so I have like a huge amount of fly times. So it's like a whole room. Well, no, not a whole really? room of fly times, but I've got a lot of fly times. Stuff. But basically I have this, I use none of it apart from this one little box here, which is just <laughs> filled with absolute, Absolutely. it's a mess. This is, a, but, this is like what I use the most right here. Just these two, my dubbing, yeah. beads, um, okay. my wire, everything's like on. They're on their school or on I, their I actually can't Oh well. Right, so that's that one done. Oh my god. My I for some reason my bobbin, well, I know why it squeaks so much. I could make it squeak less, but for some <laughs> reason I quite like the squeak, but it squeaks a lot. <laughs> and it's painful to listen to. Right. Lovely fly. Guide's choice nymph. How do you about how do you feel about fielding some questions if anyone's got any questions? I, I feel very good. If anyone has any questions at all, did we miss ask any? Ed. <laughs> huh? Did we miss any? Did anyone send them? I wasn't looking at. I don't think so. Can you <laughs> put your fly up to the camera? Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's why I don't. You can't really see it. This is half my deal. So, um, okay, yeah, I got you. So, in the language of, let's see. In the language of some oh. of the greats, um, I keep my profile like this is this is even a little thicker than I'd like. So I keep my profile really slim. That's like yeah. really important to me. Um, but yeah, super simple. I mean, it's just hairs nice. here, CDC, all that. And uh, very nice. I know this fly is gonna crush. That's the crazy thing. So super simple, and I know it's gonna crush. Crush this. <laughs> right. I have some questions for you. Get it. That I have compiled. I just have to find them. <laughs> okay. Um, you just basically answered um, <laughs> how you got started. Yeah. Now, here's a question that I've been wondering because yeah. there's a lot of things that I don't like about fly fishing. <laughs> and I oh. wondered if there was any things particularly that you didn't particularly like yes um man it's dude that's it's a hard question because there is a lot of stuff that i'm just like dude, i adore the long drives like i'll make a four or five hour drive for an eight hour day of fishing and like yeah. I, a lot of people would be like that drives me crazy but i'm like i love time on the road i don't know why um but one thing i'll say is uh can be really expensive um <laughs> that's for sure um dude, at times i think the community can be really tough like yeah like like dude it's it's i, I think a, a couple months back i was just like you know i'm, I'm kind of over the negativity and like even like yeah I, I had to really check myself about even like how i approached people because i was like you know i, I don't i, I want to be known for who i really am as a person not mm -hmm. just like territorial or trying to be like the very very best like I, I think that we have to be really realistic that there's a lot of people ahead of us that have done this for a long time and dude we're gifted and like to fish and to be out where we go is just an honor dude and um we're not the we're not the natives to the places that we go um the truth is like the fish are and the wildlife is and so to, for us to partake in for us to partake in like nature as a whole, dude, we should just be grateful and like respect it and honor it and take care of it. And I think sometimes the community, like, I think sometimes we can overlook that. And that, that stuff makes me sad. That's maybe the only thing I like have struggled with about fly fishing in the, in the recent like four or five months. So yeah, uh, otherwise, dude, I don't know. I love it all. I lost a huge steelhead a couple of days ago. That oh, I hate. Brutal. That will haunt dude. you for the rest of your life. Oh gosh, dude. And I was, <laughs> you know what it was too? It wasn't like a, it didn't, it wasn't like I played it bad. It wasn't like, um, you know, a, a hook bent. It, it was nothing like that. My, my line shredded. Like 
I, I was using this new line and um your tip it. Huh? Your tip it or your fl- my tip it. We don't need to get into it. Hang on. We've got a question. Yes. Out of curiosity, would you rather comp I think oh, that yeah. you can with you, the holes. Do you get that? Yeah, I do. I do, yeah. That's yeah. probably to you more. Well, no, I think no, it's definitely for you because so in the UK, like you have to to get to to gain access to water, you have to yeah. join lots of different fishing clubs yeah. or pay for day tickets or whatever. Whereas you know, you just buy a state license and you can go yeah. wherever you want. But you're also, you know, but the clubs here are restricted membership. So mm. with your restricted membership, you're less likely to Run into be competing for fishing. I mean, I basically never see anyone else when i go fishing dude you're so you have it made <laughs> to some degree <laughs> but but it's really expensive so yeah, yeah. it right. costs a lot of money and you're restricted in where you can go because yeah year. so mine aren't quite as expensive up here but like a lot of them and i mean go you know go further south and so duncan's in uh sheffield go further south down to hampshire and you're looking at you know, some of the really expensive stuff are into the tens of thousands of pounds. Wow, yeah. yeah. So, and that's to access a piece of water. Yeah. Like one piece of water. So yeah. what would you rather? It's a hard, it's, it's definitely a tough question. I I think, um, Good I question, think there's Duncan. like, there's a variation of, <laughs> doesn't open it up to many people. That's really nice, it's true. But there's like a variation of how busy stuff gets. Okay. So 400 a day, that's insane. And then don't you have to have, you have to have a guide. Too, that's a right? cheap stuff. You don't have to, no. Oh, okay. Okay. That's a cheap one. Well, yeah. I used to sell it. It's about 250 pounds a day up to anything up to 500 pounds a day. So a thousand dollars a day. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, well, what I would say is I think that um, when you when you look at Instagram, okay, when you look at Instagram and you look at public water, um, you're getting a whole range of like, um, you're getting a whole range of what it looks like because, dude, the one one of the things that I just adore about fly fishing is there's so much unfound water, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, particularly here in the United States, we have a lot of land, right? And there's a lot of blue lines on the map that are un they're unexplored, right? And so. You have public access to those, right? And you yeah. got to hike in, you got to work hard. You have to make long drives, whatever. Um, but they're there. And I buy one pass for the year and I'm good, you know? So that's See? that's nice. Like, but, yeah. yeah, carry on, sorry. Well, but at the same time, you know, if there's a steelhead run or there is um, a time of the year when rainbows are moving up or... Um, you know, there or or if or if a, a stream gets really popular, um, really good example of this, and I, it doesn't matter if I say it because so many people know about it and go there. Um, but there's there's tributaries in Truckee that like people have just like blown up, and so that stuff's sad because you know you have great fisheries that get hammered, right? And then people don't respect when fish are doing their thing and spawning, and so if there was a cost on those places. I think that would be really healthy, but um, yeah, I don't know. you're talking about really specific legislation, you know. So yeah, no, I sure, but it's, it's a it's an interesting thing, right? Because a lot of people over here, um, you know, sort of think that if we had loads more access to water and stuff like that, then it'd be much yeah. better. And in some ways, you know, I've always dreamt of being able to just kind of to have that exploratory side to fly fishing which you can't do here in the same way it's That's really difficult. difficult to just go you know say oh cool or like you've driven over a river and you're like oh i'd love to fish that That's but you just problem. can't you can't yeah. do that so you know it's a case of then finding out who the landowner is if there's a fishing club if there's so you have to go through so many like, a lot of the time you can get it and most people if you say what is the truck uh, yeah and you know what's crazy wow his name is duncan yeah okay um duncan the crazy thing about it is man you could go to the trucky today and you might see one person um especially if you know it well like that's that's the wild thing about it it's a huge river and it's got good access but also there's a lot of non-accessible like right off the road 
Um, one thing I really like about Truckee too, it's like for fly fishing, that's school of hard knocks because the truth of the matter is people, especially the old school guys who fish a Truckee, dude, if they see a car, you should pass. Like that, that's, that's the reality of it. Like if you see a car parked at the spot, they're like, it's a huge river, go somewhere else, man. And so, um, 80,000 people is in a year. That's like, like the, the Chucky remains, you know, healthy and it's a huge river. And so, yeah, but it sucks, dude. Don't go there. <laughs> but yeah, like, oh yeah. Uh, hopefully that has answered your question slightly, Duncan. <laughs> I would not want to pay 1200 bucks a year. That would deter me a little bit. <laughs> no, but then maybe one you river. would. But For one maybe, river. But mate, well, I think Duncan's one has a few red rivers, but normally you join. So, like, I've joined a club uh, which has got like access to water on ten different rivers, that sort of thing. So, there's a few. Um, there are a few clubs which are like that, but most of them yeah. are one river. But you know, a lot of them are a bit cheaper. But then you would get pretty much exclusive access to that water, yeah. like. There are not many anglers in this country. And the reason those club memberships are expensive is because a lot of the clubs can't actually fill the clubs. So they charge more for their membership so that they can still afford to run because, you know, you've got a certain amount of upkeep yes. because most of them stock. Da -da -da -da. So in order for them to exist, they have to charge high sure. fee. Sure. So a lot of clubs are getting more expensive because of that. Yeah. Now, We'll do another question before we try another fly. Yeah. And I was thinking, I was thinking about this the other day because some pretty weird stuff has happened to me whilst I've been out fly fishing. And I wondered what the weirdest thing you have seen on the river is. But oh, what is this something? Oh, well, dude, uh, you know, because I've, spent so much time like you and like many other people on the river <laughs> there's been some embarrassing moments there's been some moments i'm really sad about <laughs> um, there's been moments where i think i was pretty darn near like i don't know if i could do this again um and that those were more involved people um yeah but i'm just trying to think like a really a really good or bad one um and one that i don't feel so embarrassed about sharing um <laughs> no, the more embarrassing the better daniel <laughs> no they get pretty tough dude and also like i i yeah they get tough um <laughs> you're like imagining what could possibly happen we're not John, as, we're not as proper here you know in the u.s okay <laughs> we're not, i mean well, I can tell you one of the weirdest things that ever happened to me. I okay, remembered yeah, it you very said, randomly you said, the other day. You set the bar, okay. Okay, I'll set, I'll set the bar. So I was fishing in in North Wales on the River Dean, like midwinter, and uh, I was quite young. I was about 12. It was a big river, quite fast. It was like minus something degrees, and I, uh, oh. I can see the back of you or something. And... Oh, and I got my fly caught on the bottom, okay. which happens because we're fishing for grayling, heavy bugs, huh. stuff like that. And uh, so I went over to get it. Um, I don't know why I did this, but I like ran my arm down the line to pull the fly out. It was huh. unbelievably cold. It was just such a stupid idea in the first place. But then, for some reason, I convinced myself that it was hooked on a human hand <laughs> i don't know why uh but i had a total freak out in the middle of this massive river suddenly realized i was in quite fast current and just was completely stuck mm -hmm. and had someone had to come in and get me and drag me out and i had massive freak out because i thought there was a dead body at the bottom of the river and i'd hooked it wait was it very strange <laughs> Is it it wasn't a actually hand? a human hand. Was it? <laughs> it's probably a glove. Was it like tickling you or like what made you think it was a human hand? No, because I put my hand on it because I grabbed the fly. The fly was mm. hooked in something. 
Mm. And I gra- went down and it was really, really, it was a strange experience. It was like fleshy and mushy or something? Like I think it was just a glove. Oh, but it kind of felt yeah. like a finger, you see. So, yeah. Okay. But, yeah, it really, really, really freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really quick. This person said, lived in Montana and fished Cali a couple weeks ago. Want to hear your take on native versus stock fish. Can you see a major difference in strength and endurance? Lived in Montana and fished Cali a couple weeks ago. Okay, the only thing I can't tell about that question is, are you, did you go and fish? Are you saying you went and fished? Um, what's up, Christian? But are you saying you went and fished a spot in Cali and the Cali spot had um, stock trout? Because um, if that's what you're saying, I mean, they, they've got them everywhere. But um, yeah, one thing I would say is, uh, dude, yes, can definitely tell the difference. Um, to be honest, I, as much as I can, um, stay away from stocked streams. And like, I say that kind of, I say that kind of like wishy-washy only because I know for a fact, like there's places that have stock streams in them, um, that have just existed and kind of adapted to, um, the climate. And so then maybe they're a little bit tougher past the ban on Cali fishing. Dude, that's so sad. Sorry. I, I heard about this. We, we act, there was a live like webinar thing and California was talking about if they're banning fishing or not for COVID. And so dang, I that's ages I'll have, ago. I'll have to look inside it. for weeks. <laughs> and I'll have to look into it. But anyways, dude, yes, I think you can tell. I definitely think you can tell the difference between a stock fish and a native fish. Mainly because A, the amount of like strength, or excuse me, the amount of like um perseverance in the fight, I guess if that makes sense. Like they're gonna keep fighting. I don't know if you know, like stockfish, like they'll kind of turn over and just be like, yeah, whatever. Or they'll like spin or something like that. So definitely you can you can tell. And also just as like as someone who tries to land fish really quick, a native fish is gonna take me a decent amount longer than a stockfish. I could probably I could probably bust in a stockfish and like hook up, fight it for a second, and just pull dog it in. So um yeah. But also, dude, I, I, I'm so against stalking. I think um, part of the reason why, you know, they stalk is so that people buy licenses and they go to different destinations and, you know, they are tourists there and they fill hotels or whatever. Um, but if you just left a stream alone, it would it would do its thing and, and heal up. And really what you're doing when you put stock fish in is you're creating competition for the native fish. And so um, the food resource is a lot less. Um, yeah, that's kind of long way around it so good answer yeah now i want to hear what weird stuff oh, <laughs> you've been okay. fishing. Oh, i'm trying to just i'm just trying to there's uh, my life i've learned is just so full of weird things um <laughs> dude if it, it, it oscar if it was just you and i i would tell you this just morbid story about something that happened with jesse and a goose and just Excellent. the worst the worst day of fishing I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, Sounds ideal. I can't though. I can't. There's like people, you know, there's a reputation oh. of these people. So I can't. But I will tell you a funny story about myself that makes myself. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Mate, that's um, that's okay. the sort of thing we're looking for. <laughs> so um uh my my good buddy Christian, he was just on here. You saw him say, uh, I hear there's a band. Um he and I uh we met in college and he lived up in Tahoe uh, and he had moved back to Tahoe while I was still living in LA, which I'm so glad I got out of that place because it is a, uh, a, a trash bin. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but so we would have to, when we wanted to see each other after we were done with school, we would have to meet somewhere. Right. And yeah. he was in Tahoe. I was in LA. That's six hour, seven hour, eight hour difference really. And so we would meet, typically like off 395 or often um, just the Eastern Sierras. And one time I was driving up and it's a seven hour drive for me. And it was like a three and a half hour drive for him. And um, he got to where we were supposed to meet before I did. And um, where we were going to meet was this brewery up in the Eastern Sierras. And apparently they found out that Christian was from Tahoe and they started giving him drinks and he's texting me. He's like, Oh man, like, dude, we're set up for the night. Like they're hooking it up with, some good beer and all that stuff and i'm feeling lame because you know i i'm not joining in on the party i'm two hours behind christian's having a good time and when i get there he's you know full glow and stoked and just happy to see each other whatever and i'm like okay dude like hop in 
um, hop in, like, let's get out of here. Like, let's go get to our camp spot so that we can chill, get a fire and I can catch up to wherever the heck you're at. So we're driving in um, into the sticks a little bit. And we get to the fireplace and Christian got two growlers of this triple IPA that I really love. And um, I'm like, okay, well, I got, I got to catch up here. I'm like, I, I can't let my friend be so far ahead of me. And so I just started tilting back this growler and bomb beer and I've had it before. Um, and the next day we're intending to fish and we're going to hike in about two and a half miles to go fish. Um, and I just tilted this thing back and got so sick and on top of that, had a bunch of bean burritos. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> and dude, just lost it at the fireplace and just too much. Cause I was trying to catch up, have a good time. Like I just was so sick, went to sleep, had no water, didn't have dinner because I it, it was lost, you know, I was at the fireplace. And so we start hiking in in the morning and like not even a hundred yards in, I'm like, Christian, dude, I don't feel good. Like my legs are cramping. <laughs> My stomach doesn't go. <laughs> I got some. I got some stuff happening in my intestines a little bit. Like I'm not. I'm not really feeling good. Oh, I have to literally stop just like a hundred yards in. And typically, dude, I mean, we'll we'll make treks eight nine miles into the wilderness, right? And dude, on this trail, I gotta like pull off to the side, squat down, like oh, try man. and make myself feel a little bit better. Walk in, dude. I haven't. I'm dehydrated. I haven't had anything to eat. I'm like just a miserable mess, embarrassed. People are like walking by. I'm just like, dude, I, I'm, I'm a lost cause here. Like you should leave me behind maybe. And anyways, we like make it all the way in. We're going to float to, we're float tubing. I'm cramping up when I'm float tubing because I'm, my body's so dehydrated. I like fall asleep on the side of the, on the side of the lake. And like, I just, I'm, I was just a mess that day and so embarrassed because I was just trying to have a good time, you know, I'm trying to catch up and, here I am looking like a fool. You can't, can't walk this path. I'm going to take breaks after like no elevation climbed. I just, just silly dude. Just not, not ideal. Not, not the ideal. right combination. Well, I once thought I saw a ghost. When I was fishing. <laughs> a ghost? Yeah, genuinely. I was fishing for sea trout. At Same night. guy with the hand or no? No, no. But I, I was fishing for sea trout at night and I'd been, I'd been at work all day so I'd work, been at work since like seven in the morning, and it was like three o'clock the next morning, fishing for sea trout. And yep. uh, I was with some friends of mine, and uh, I was get I was, I really did start seeing things. I got it got weird, and uh, <laughs> oh, <no>. I I <laughs> I a guy one of the guys I was with. I didn't realize but basically it was pitch black i couldn't see anything and then all i saw was just this like orange glow just bobbing towards me i was like this is it this is the end <laughs> this is it this, this is my life oh, no. yeah, I, 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 the ghost is going to come and it's going to take me away and and that's fine uh it was it was it was just a guy smoking a cigarette <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> but, but I genuinely it, it was coming closer and closer and my heart was like oh, this is this is gonna happen now. <laughs> okay, yeah. dude, I have I have a, I have two questions and one of them right. is full curiosity, okay? And it, it's funny because I kind of alluded to this earlier when I was like, we're not as proper, right? So one thing I've noticed and I really respect as I watch like like people from the UK fish is I think there's still such a cool culture around like this old school vibe around fly fishing. Does that make sense? Like I, maybe it's yeah. just grown out of proportion, but people wearing like nice clothes while they fish or like, no, that's like, that's like the most, that's like what we're seeing. Hey, you've, been, you've been seeing some random ass stuff. <laughs> I don't, I, honestly, I, I've never seen, I mean, maybe some people when they go salmon fishing in Scotland, Okay. Might wear a tweed jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some people wear like tweed caps and stuff, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't I I don't think I don't know. What have you been looking at? Uh Instagram accounts, dude. Or even like uh, yeah, or even I definitely when I don't spend enough time on Instagram. Yeah, maybe well good for you. I, I'm but, so uneducated. 
or even sometimes when I've watched a documentary and maybe it's just show, you know, maybe they put it on like when they're, when they're filming or doing this stuff or like, Hey, let's go do this. And it's kind of like, but I, I, it's really cool, dude. I just couldn't put myself in the position where I'm like, okay, I might get wet. Like it might start raining. It's, is it going to be comfortable, but they look sick. Like no doubt about it. Um, and even when, when we talk about like the idea of people paying, like, you know, a decent price. I always dress fancy when I fish. I don't know if that's true or not true. Okay, so <laughs> my sister says so not. Oh my god, that's, um, that's super funny. But um, maybe I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like just stuff that I've seen. I'm like, wow, they like they still hold the tradition, or they still hold this like culture of like fly fishing being this. There, very... there is some of that. There is some of that in, in okay. on chalk streams. But Matt, you've got it better. That's all I'm going to say. You've got it better. What do you mean? The, well, because, you know, what you've got in the States is fly fishing seems accessible mm. because everyone's not walking around wearing tweeds. Mm. And That's fair. You know, yeah. Like, that, that image in the UK, I believe, has massively contributed to the lack of uptake in fly fishing yeah. as a sport. That's one of the first things you and I talked about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, yeah. you know, if it, everyone <laughs> in this country thinks you need to be a millionaire and, well, not everyone, but a lot of people in this country think that in order to fly fish, you need a lot of money and all that kind of yeah. stuff, and it's just not true. But that, you know, the, the, those, those clothes and that kind of stuff has definitely added to, added to that. Huh. that yeah. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And that's like, right. that was a question that you had too. And this guy said, if you wear Patagonia, that's fancy in my book. That's pretty funny. Dude, no knock. Love the company. They make great gear. But even Sims, dude, they say $800 pair of waders. That's yeah, that's un unbelievable amounts of money. That's incredible. Yeah. And I mean, props to them though, because with that number, they set the bar very high. And like, I think that creates an idea of like, this is the ultimate. And their stuff looks yeah. sick. And it's lightweight and it's good materials, well made. But even that's that's a crazy amount. Like that's that's, that's a lot of money. Pretty wild, yeah. Um, but one money. thing you were asking is like, how do you think we can get more people into the community or into yeah. fly fishing? So I, I'm sure you have some thoughts. I know you do because we oh, talked about do. But we're yeah. here to talk to you. <laughs> well, let let me hear a little bit. Come on. Well, I mean, so it's it's very different in the UK. Like we've got a very different situation here in mm -hmm. the. You know, we don't have free access to water, but, yeah. you know, essentially in the UK, the, the massive problem is that there's a really bad image problem. Everyone thinks that, you know, before people even take it up, they, they hit a hurdle in that the, the perception is that it's really expensive or difficult mm. or whatever. So, mm. you know, before people even pick up a fly rod and have a go, mm. there's so many hurdles to jump. And even then, you know, you pick up a fly rod and you have a go, it's hard. So you have to really be committed to it to, to carry on. So there's a there's just there are infin, infinite barriers essentially in this country. It's like a recreational um, caste system. Like oh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. That's that's wild. Big, like, yeah. I mean, even fly fishing as a whole, right? It started with high, like, bureaucratic people to some degree. And and they enjoyed it, yeah. and that's the way they fished it. And so it's like it hasn't broken yeah. out of that mold where in the United States, dude, we pride ourselves in this idea of trout bums. Like, that's like a thing. Like, yeah. like I, I was talking with a guy on the river who I know rips fish, and he was wearing just old beat-up Hodgman, like, neoprene waders and had junky shoes, and, like, he just nailed it. Like, he's, he's a great fisherman, and there's no difference between he or I. There's just a little bit more money, like, spent. Yeah. Or yeah. A little, yeah, so... Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a really difficult one, and I think in the states you seem to have almost at capacity of fly anglers. Like it's become it's become more popular there, hasn't it? Um, yes, yeah, definitely, it's on the up. Yeah, yeah, and it's the same. <clears throat> we've seen the same thing in you know mainland Europe, Scandinavia, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's not increasing at, at that at a really fast rate, but yeah, there's more young people doing it than there are here. But anyway, it is slowly changing, I think, here. Like, the signs are, the signs are definitely there, but it's going to take a lot of work. And, yeah. you know, I think really uh, 
we've we've lost a generation mm. basically so mm. the i mean i could talk about this for hours but i think what's happened is people have um just focused too much on teaching kids to fish and forgetting that kids can only go fishing if their parents can go to mm. so if the adult doesn't fish it's going to be pretty hard for the child to so you're better off focusing on teaching people who are 18 to 30 interesting yeah who can afford it who can afford it who can travel who can drive who can do whatever yeah and then hope that they'll then pass it on to their kids yeah but basically from what i can see you know everyone's been really focused on getting kids involved in fishing because that's how they started but the world has changed dramatically yeah. since the time that those people started. So, yeah. you know, but it is changing now and there are, you know, young adults getting into the sport and, you know, I th- I, I, I'm confident it will change. Anyway. Well, before I, I say something, Charles Sniper, dude, I love your comments, dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Oscar, I think one thing I love about even just like one of the reasons why I think you and I first connected early on but dude, uh, I mean, what you're saying, it's not, it's not a frustration. It's not like a frustration with just like how it's set up. For you, I think in a lot of ways, you're like, dude, this is a great sport. And it's great for your health. And it's great for your well-being. And like to make that limited access to a bunch of kids who need it or a bunch of people who, who need it. And like, you and I talked a lot about it. Like, I mean, fly fishing for for lack of better words and honestly they're great words it's dude it's therapy for me man i love oh, my house huh? yeah dude i leave my house and it, it gives me the opportunity to like relax and like stop thinking for a little bit or even think and and pull away and, and get in touch with the side of me that's like completely lost in the city and um yeah and so like just what i hear in your heart it's not like it's not like you're you, it, the the thing isn't that you're pissed off about the system. You're pissed off that like people can't enjoy it the way that yeah. you get to. And so yeah. I love that, dude. I I I think for me, um, bit different in the states, um, especially California. We have forty million people, and so um, forty million people. If you know, we got a ton of more people into it, it'd be really tough. But um, what I do really love and enjoy is part of what I get to do as a youth pastor, just someone who works at a church is, dude, I have a huge community here of people who, dude, if I take them out fly fishing and I teach them how to fly fish and we get time on the water, like I can have great conversation. And like, that's, that's one thing for me that's been really cool. And, or even just with buddies, like it's a place that hosts great, great conversation for me. And um, yeah, it, is. It, it gets, it gets a lot of kids. Like I feel like kids who really struggle and, it can get them out of a, a rhythm that they've been in for a long time. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, it is, it's better than, it's better than a lot of the things that they do with their time. Um, yeah, for sure. so the younger generation, I think there's, there's a lot to learn about patience with fly fishing and dedication and um, even just using your creativity. I mean, as we sit down and tie a fly, like that takes fine, fine mechanic work. It takes, yeah. it takes thinking and imagining, um, yeah, it, it's uh, it's it's like a real gift that that you could share with a, a student or a kid, and, and even I, I think about um, close friends of mine, their parents um, first learning how to fish when they're like 50, 60. Um, and dude, like um, a lot of people who I think really latch on to fly fishing are people who just desperately need something like that, like like not only did they get hooked on the idea of hooking into a fish and it fighting like madness, but the, the idea of a really healthy escape, like is mm-hmm. that's a gift dude. And like to share that with people who really need that is it's a beautiful thing. dude. I, I, yeah, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be half as sane as I am without it. Um, yeah. 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 I, I, I agree fully 100, 100%. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, um, and that, and that's that, is what I want to share with people. And that's why it's, it makes yeah. me sad the situation in this country, but the, the reason, you know, I think because it is such an incredibly special thing, I think as soon as you expose it to people in the right way, it's such an easy thing to, to get people involved with because, 
yeah. it is amazing. But we, you know, we just have to get over the first hurdle, which is the actually getting people to try it. But we're working on it. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's um, a, is it um is it a money thing or is it like a no? Like it's a, a people just don't think it's people. I don't think people even think of it as a potential option as a thing to do. You know, it's uh people think it's just either a bunch of old men standing around in tweeds you know <laughs> like i described <laughs> yeah exactly you know so people definitely think there's that image around it or you know a lot of the time you go not always but you can go into a fishing shop and people will be yeah you know, like the fly fishing community is amazing and awful at the same time yeah like it can be so incredibly supportive, mm. but also, you know, and I, you know, for the most part experienced unbelievable levels of support, but, um, you know, not everyone is, is super keen to help necessarily. And if you're, I can't even imagine a, as a newcomer coming into the sport, yeah. dealing with that sort of stuff. Like no, it's, it's so true. daunting. It's a massive sport. So much information is so tricky. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, well, but I just wanted to respond really quickly to Duncan. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Another person said, okay, wait. Uh, the trout sniper, nothing better in God's country, take talking the word. Um, people have forgot about the outdoors. This other guy said, smoke some some mush mush fall in the river. Smoke some back. More refreshing than a therapist could do for you. Um, but yeah, so, right? I, to Duncan, Duncan, you're saying like, I can't even have a conversation without paying a, a fee. Yeah, that's a real bummer. Um, yeah. I, I guess one thing, I, I, I mean, I, I guess we take it for granted in the United States, but dude, the, the language is BLM, like like Bureau of Land Management. Like that's free to access land. It's land owned by us as people, as taxpayers. And I guess in that idea, there's a fundamental difference too, where it's like, like how do we understand our connectivity to the earth that we live on as as an idea of like dude who owns that like we do I, I, not, not, not not some government we as people have the honor and the privilege of walking amongst it and so that's really tough dude and and i actually my heart breaks over the idea that you would have to pay to have the kind of conversations i get to have on the river and i, I, I don't know that's really tough and um i hope they i hope they, they shore up something and figure it out and it's get it will get it's getting better like you know i so i'm on the committee of the local fishing club here and you know they're unbelievably receptive to doing stuff and actually so we were talking i was talking with them the other day about you know making guest tickets for members free so that we can bring people along and you know i think the the issue is is people just haven't necessarily thought about it or i think they've thought about it but not necessarily come up with the with the with the right ideas or whatever. I mean, a lot of the ideas are there, but clubs now, a lot, not all clubs, but a lot of clubs are, you know, really struggling for members. Mm. Um, and they're having to adjust, you know, they're having to go, if we want to be around for another 150 years as a fishing club, then we need to do things differently. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, well, I think this is things going to get cut off in about a minute. Oh, wait. Because I'm pretty sure it's only an hour oh, that it's cool. live for. I mean, I'll so, back up if you want to keep going. I'm good to go. We could we could do that. We I'm, could I'm do good that. to go, man. I'll, I'll tie another fly and I'll talk all day. So Yeah? Yeah, I'm down, man. <laughs> cool. We'll start, we'll start it back up then. Um, Does it just kick you off? I don't know. I don't know. We'll find <laughs> out. We'll see what happens in... It's Chucky. 30 seconds.